In the small town of Columns, Neal, Texas, a couple was on their way to church with their six-year-old daughter. Now, this wasn't unusual because the couple and their daughter went to church every Sunday. Service was normal, and then towards the end of service, that's when the couple decided to walk out to their car to grab something while their six-year-old daughter sat inside. But as soon as the couple walked outside, both of them would be shot to death in the parking lot execution style. When the police showed up to the scene, it was a shock because this was a very small town and I know that's how all true crime stories happen you know it's a small town where everyone knows everyone and nothing like this happens but this town had a population of 550 people so genuinely nothing like this ever has happened and so this was a huge shock to the police to the community and it was even a bigger shock to when the police found out that the person who did this crime wasn't working alone and it was actually an act of revenge. Located northeast of Houston lies the very small town of Columns, Neal, Texas. As I said, they had a population of around 550 people, so this was genuinely a town where everyone knew everyone, and if they didn't know you personally, they would definitely know a person that you knew or even a relative of yours. It wasn't really the type of town where people would go and vacation, it was just more the type of town that people would drive through just to get from one part of Texas to the other. And on January 14th, 2014, 35-year-old Nathan Maddox was going to church with his wife, Crystal Maddox, while they were with their daughter, six-year-old Madison. Madison was actually Nathan's daughter from a previous relationship that he had with a woman named Kristen Westfall. Now, I want to say this in the beginning. I know that their names sound very similar, Crystal and Kristen, but Kristen is Nathan's ex-girlfriend, while Crystal is Nathan's current wife. Just so you know at the top of the episode, because I know the names can get quite confusing sometimes. Nathan and Crystal got married back in 2013 and had been married for about a year at this point. Nathan worked at a warehouse called Luckfin Industries where they sold measuring tapes, while Crystal did honestly a little bit of everything. She was a small business owner of a clothing company called All That Sparkles, and she even had her own boutique called Shabby Sheep Peak Boutique. Crystal was also very very active in the community and did a lot of the local beauty pageants. So she would make a lot of the performance gowns and do all of the hair and the makeup. And like Nathan, Crystal actually had kids from a previous relationship where she had four children with her recent ex-husband. She was described overall to be a very bubbly and sweet person. She was really, really good with kids because her herself had a very childlike nature because she just had this very warm mothering energy to her, kind of like a Disney princess sort of energy. Crystal, even as a teenager, was insanely creative, and even after high school, she didn't really have plans on going to college because her main goal was to be a mother. And so a few months after she graduated high school, that's when she would get married to her high school sweetheart, and then shortly after that, they would go on to have their very first child together. Three months after their first child, that is when they would have their second child. And then they continued to have two more children up until 2009 when at this point the couple's relationship was getting a little bit more rocky where they decided to get a divorce and when they separated crystal took all four kids with her and moved to columns neal sort of as a fresh start now from crystal's social media it seemed like she absolutely loved her kids her favorite thing to do with her little girls was to make them really pretty like princess gowns and beauty pageant gowns and they would play dress up and her daughters would perform little plays and stuff like that. She would also make all of her kids Halloween costumes. She seemed to be a very creative and hands-on mother and really just would do anything for her kids. That's when she decided to open up her own store to sell all of her clothes and jewelry and then she started to get more involved into the local beauty pageants where she was doing photography for all the little girls and it was in 2011 where at one of her events Crystal would bump into Nathan. Now Crystal and Nathan actually actually went to high school together. And then after that, they just kind of went their own separate ways. And so when Crystal met up with Nathan again in this small town of Columns, Neal, what are the odds that both of them moved to the exact same small town? And so shortly after this, that's when Nathan and Crystal started dating. And then slowly after that, Crystal started to introduce Nathan to her children. Now, this was very stressful for Crystal because as I said, she absolutely loved her children. So her children's opinion of Nathan 
routine really was important to her. It's always so stressful when you're introducing your kids to a new partner because it's kind of like when you're, you know, introducing a new partner to your parents, you're like sitting there awkwardly observing, waiting for approval. But Crystal was so, so happy to see that Nathan absolutely loved her kids and her kids loved Nathan. Nathan was super hands-on with the kids and loved playing dress up with the little girls. Nathan would even go out with the kids one-on-one -on -one and take them out on little trips and spend quality time with them even though he didn't have to. And Nathan actually had Madison, aka Maddie, with his ex-wife Kristen. Nathan and Kristen had met and got married in Texas before shortly after getting a home and then having their first child, Madison. But unfortunately, having a house is not cheap. It's very, very expensive to upkeep the house, to pay for the house. And so that's when Nathan decided to accept a job all the way out in Montana, where he would frequently come home and visit Kristen and Madison and frequently send money back home to them. And for the most part, Nathan thought things were fine. He loved Kristen. He loved Madison. He thought they had the perfect little family together until one day he came home from Montana. And when he walked in the door, he noticed that most of the things inside of the house were gone and there was a note on the kitchen table. This note was written by Kristen. And in this note, Kristen would then begin to say that she is choosing to leave Nathan because of their relationship. Within this note, she starts saying things like, I don't know where you are and I don't know when you'll ever come home, but I'm not happy anymore. Which, mind you, she did know where he was. She did know that he was in Montana because he was frequently calling her every day, asking about her day. He would also frequently send her money to support her and her daughter. So she knew exactly where he was, but this is also a trend that you will see come up very frequently where Kristen just doesn't really make sense. Hello everyone, don't worry, it's still me just thanking the sponsor of today's video, Shopify. Now, as a lot of you guys know, starting a business is not easy and it's 10 times harder when you have to do it alone. Good ideas always come from collaboration. And there's been a couple of partners in crime that have gotten it done, such as Watson and Holmes, Cagney and Lacey, the Hardy Boys. But what makes the perfect partner when it comes to growing your business? That is you and Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the real first life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? <laughs> Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you are selling sleuthing supplies or marketing mystery merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers and the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. Shopify helps you sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. And I personally add aside, like I really do love Shopify and genuinely every single person that I've met that does use Shopify have always said great things about them. I feel like Shopify compared to a lot of other large corporations genuinely really do care about their business owners. They're always staying really connected with their community and always giving back to their community. And I don't know, I just feel like that's one of the main things that I really look for in certain companies that I decide to put my services into. But you always wanna just work with a company that is for you and by your side every step of the way. And I feel like Shopify really does do that. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of others entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash behind. And now grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash behind. Thank you once again to Shopify for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to your episode. 
And in the know, Kristen would also go on to say that she is leaving Nathan and she's taking Madison with her. And she refuses to let Nathan see Madison. And right next to the note was actually a constructive abandonment order. Now, if you guys don't know or have never heard of a constructive abandonment order, a constructive abandonment order is, quote, when a spouse refuses to provide care, financial support, or protect to a terminally ill or incapacitated spouse or child without just cause. She had went to the police station and filed this order and claimed that Nathan was doing nothing to support the family and she was basically taking care of Madison all by herself. And so when Nathan reads this, he immediately starts calling Kristen, texting Kristen, but there's no response. So he goes to the police station and eventually the police look at what's going on. They release the order and Nathan is able to see Madison again. At that point, that's when Nathan found out that Kristen and Madison had been staying with Kristen parents, Letha and Paul, as well as her brother, Cameron. And shortly after this is when Nathan began getting visitation rights towards Madison, and this was also around the time where Nathan and Crystal started talking. So then over time, as I said, Crystal's kids and Nathan had met, and so now it was time for Madison to meet Crystal, and Madison absolutely loved Crystal. Crystal was a bubbly girl's girl, so of course Madison absolutely loved Crystal. Madison would even play with Crystal young daughters because Madison was an only child so she really wasn't around kids like that and so this really gave Madison an opportunity to know what it felt like to have siblings but in return this made specifically Kristen as well as her parents Letha and Paul very angry that Madison started to choose Nathan's new wife Crystal over her mom, Kristen. And then in June of 2012, Kristen would attempt at applying full custody over Madison. And unfortunately, this would just be the beginning to a very long and stressful custody battle. It seemed like in a way, Kristen wanted to control Nathan's feelings and emotions. And so when she left and took Madison with her, she kind of thought that in a way, she would be controlling Nathan's emotions, taking some something that he loves away from him. But since Nathan did nothing wrong, he eventually got visitation rights, which made her extremely angry. But on top of that, Nathan already had moved on and got a new girlfriend, which made her extremely more mad. It just seemed like Nathan was doing 10 times better without Kristen in his life. He was in a genuinely happy relationship with Crystal. He took care of and loved her four children as well as Madison. Nathan at this time also got got a new job in the town. He didn't have to go back and forth to Montana. He could finally stay at home with his kids. And it seemed like overall, Nathan was doing so much better and was so much happier without Kristen. And this just made Kristen very jealous and angry that he wasn't struggling in the same way that she had hoped he would. And this custody battle would go on for an entire two years in 2013. And it was quite clear that Kristen was not fit to to be a mother because in the past, she had actually gotten arrested multiple times with possession of meth. She had also been arrested multiple times before with possession of weed and coke. So clearly Kristen was not fit to be a mother. And so since Kristen couldn't really have much leverage in this custody battle, that's when Kristen would call for help from her parents, Paul and Letha, to which Paul and Letha attempted at getting full custody over Maddie, to which they won full custody over Madison. And so that meant Nathan nor Crystal could see Madison. But Crystal was not gonna go down without a fight. She marched over to Letha and Paul's house and she told them that Nathan has the right to see his own child, he has visitation rights, and she will not be leaving until she sees Madison. I think it visits on, from six to eight on Thursday. He also gets this Thanksgiving. We have a lawyer. We have a lawyer. Right. Y'all have uh, told someone that we have an injunction saying we can't have visits, but I talked to my lawyer on the way out here, and that's not true. He told me, come out and get our visit. I, I have the papers right here. That ain't worth the papers wrote on. We just got it overrode. Last week, was y'all yeah. in court? 
But unfortunately, due to this, Nathan and Crystal really couldn't do much because custody battles or any sort of legal battles are so expensive and they did not really have that much money to be fighting for that long. And so that's when Nathan and Crystal started to do whatever they could in order to help and get Maddie back and pay for all their legal fees. Crystal and Nathan started working longer hours, picking up extra shifts. Crystal even picked up two extra jobs just to help pay for the legal fees. And in the end, they went through the entire process and Crystal and Nathan were successfully able to gain visitation rights over Madison. But during their first visit, it did have to be a supervised visit. So a person from DCFS had to be present during this first visit. But then after that, Nathan could just see Madison whenever he wanted with no supervision. And this supervised visit would actually take place one Sunday at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church church. And on January 18th, 2014, from the Mount Carmel Baptist Church, this police call would come through. What's going on? What's going on? You heard shot? What's up the door, please? And shortly after that call was made, the police showed up, but unfortunately, it was too late. Both Nathan and Crystal had been shot to death execution style in the forehead. Except Nathan, in particular, had two shots, one in his stomach and one in his forehead. Madison, thank God, was inside of the church, so she didn't have to witness anything. But weirdly, that 911 call was made by Letha, Kristen's mother. On this specific specific day, the supervised visit of Madison, Nathan, and Crystal, Letha randomly decided to tag along to church with them that day. And apparently service had went per usual until during the end of service when Nathan and Crystal needed to grab something out of the car. So they both went outside and when they did, that's when both of them were shot. When these shots were heard, church staff immediately shut the door and they started to direct everyone to a safer part of the church with no windows in case this was an active shooter. When the police investigated the scene, they found a 3030 gun shell, which came from a very commonly used rifle. And so when both of their bodies were brought into autopsy, when Nathan's body was being examined, as I said, he had one shot in his forehead and in his stomach. But what was odd is that medical examiners found out that these two shots came from two different guns, meaning that this person, whoever did this, did not work alone. After this, Paul, Kristen, and Cameron were all called with the news of what happened because Letha was at the church. And when the three of them got the news, it was said that they were all to be in great shock. I mean, Paul himself was so shocked that he sent himself into a seizure and needed to be sent to the hospital because he couldn't believe the news that he had just heard. And so that is when the police bring in Kristen, Letha, Paul, and Cameron in for questioning. Kristen was the first person to be interviewed and her interview was a little bit eerie. The entire time, she kept a very calm and natural demeanor. Kristen and Nathan had been together for eight years prior to all of this, and also he was the father of her daughter, and so you would think she would show a little bit more emotion. I mean, on the phone, she seemed so shocked about what happened. It would be natural for her to be a little emotional, but she just sat there as if she was having a normal conversation. But Kristen would go on to say some really odd details about Nathan. She would go on to say that maybe the reason why he got murdered was because of all of those motorcycle gangs that he was in. She goes on to say that during his time in Montana, he had joined some really rough motorcycle gangs. And there was actually one instance where a member of the motorcycle gang had showed up to Nathan's mom's house, threatening to kill her because Nathan was going to come forward about something that he saw within the gang. Kristen would go on to say as her alibi that that morning she was at the store with her father, Paul, a couple miles away from the church before the both of them went home. And on security footage at 10.57 a.m., you see both Kristen and Paul at the grocery store a couple miles away from the church. Paul was also interviewed to which he gave the same story as Kristen and his hands were tested for gun residue to which it came back inconclusive. And although this was odd, the 
reaction of the death of Nathan from both Paul and Letha were even odder. As I said, Paul had driven himself into a seizure because of how shocked and distraught that he was over the news. This is coming from the same man that was screaming in Crystal's face because Nathan wanted to see his own daughter. Clearly, if they were claiming full rights over Madison, they didn't see Nathan as a good guy or a good father. So why would Paul get so distraught about a guy that just died that he didn't even like to begin with? It was said by many people that Letha and Paul and Nathan and Crystal would get into constant arguments and fights over custody of Madison, and they overall just didn't have a good relationship with one another. If a guy that you didn't really like passed away, and then his wife, whom you also didn't really like, also passed away, why the over-the-top reaction? You know, it's understandable for a little bit of shock, but it's not something that you would be completely distraught over. And so although the police didn't really have any concrete evidence to arrest them over, they did show up to the house with CPS and take Madison away from the home. They claimed that since the killers were still out there and unidentified, Maddie's safety at this time is their top priority. And and so they had to take her away from the home for her own safety, to which this made Letha, Paul, and Kristen extremely angry. And because of this rage, the police decided to search around the home, and what they found in the home was a gun that was easily accessible, something that Madison could literally just pick up and play with. They would also find feces covering their entire backyard as if they had dogs and never picked up after them, which is extremely extremely unsafe for Madison in case she's running outside in the backyard. And on top of that, they found meth in the house, literally just laying around. And according to Letha, that meth wasn't Kristen's, it was actually hers. She would go on to say that she actually bought meth a while ago to use as blackmail over Kristen. In case Kristen ever tried to leave and take Madison with her, she would have this meth to give to the police and say, hey, my daughter Kristen just ran off with my granddaughter and she does meth all the time and look what I found in the house. I found her meth. She's not fit to be a mother and given Kristen's past with going to jail for drugs multiple times, the police would probably believe Letha. But it wasn't until a month after the murder when Letha was finally arrested. In February of 2014, Letha was arrested in her home for possession of a controlled substance by fraud. Once Letha was arrested, that's when a family friend of the West Falls named Christopher came forward and talked to the sheriff about his experiences with the family. Chris would go on to say that he went over to the West Falls house multiple times before, and every single time he went over there, Letha and Paul would do nothing but talk terribly about Nathan and Crystal and about how much they hated them. Christopher also remembers a moment where Paul had even said, quote, if they come over here one more time to take that baby, I'm killing them. And Chris would even go on to say that the family even had discussions about what if they hired someone to kill Nathan and Crystal. After this, Kristen, Paul, and Cameron were also arrested. And what do you know, Paul actually had a seizure while he was being arrested. Cameron was the first to be interviewed and Cameron played innocence. He said that he would never do that to Nathan because quote, Nathan was was like a brother to me. After this, Kristen was also interviewed where she would go on to say, quote, I wouldn't kill for him to not see his daughter. Letha was also questioned where she would go on to say, quote, I literally have not had a conversation with somebody saying, will you murder Crystal and Nathan? Kind of specific, but okay. And as I said, Paul was having a seizure while he was being arrested. And so instead of going in for questioning, he was actually taken to the hospital. But upon release from the hospital, he was put into questioning to which he again preached innocence. And he said that how could he even kill them if he was at the store with Kristen and then went home straight afterwards. And so although the police had arrested four people and it seemed like they were really getting nowhere, they, at the end of the day, have 
four people. They have four people in their custody that know at least something. And so all they really needed was at least one of them to crack a little bit so that they could see a little bit deeper as to what was going on. And that crack was Paul. Paul, after a couple hours of interrogation, revealed that he was the one that killed Nathan. And as I said, there were two guns involved, so there obviously had to be a second person, to which Paul said that Kristen was this second person. And so Letha was told about Paul's confession in hopes that maybe if Paul confessed, Letha would also confess, but instead she again plays innocent and she says, whoa, that's crazy. And that's actually crazy you say that because I remember hearing Paul yelling from outside, but it, I knew it couldn't be Paul because he would never do anything like this. Letha said that in the past, Paul had made claims and he's made little side comments about killing them or murdering them, but she's never really taken them seriously because she never thought he was capable of doing something like that. Now, Cameron as well is aware of Paul's confession to which he starts to open up a little bit. Cameron would go on to say that he has overheard Kristen and Paul multiple times making up a plan on how to kill Nathan and Crystal. And he remembers specifically Kristen saying that she didn't want to write anything down because she, quote, didn't want to leave a paper trail. Cameron also says that after the murder, Paul came home and gave both of the guns to Cameron and asked him to dispose of both of them. So now that leads us into the real story of what happened. On Sunday, January 14th, 2014, when Nathan, Crystal, and Madison were on their way to church, that's when Letha, at the last second, decided that she wanted to go to church with them, just to spend some quality time with Madison. But on this specific day, as I said, this was the last day that Nathan had to have someone from CPS supervising the visit. After this day, he would be given visitation rights, and he could just hang out with Madison whenever he wanted without being supervised. But when the police confiscated the family phones, that is when text messages would reveal that Letha definitely was in on the plan because shortly after she showed up to church, that's when she would text Kristen saying, quote, they are here. And then two hours later, Kristen would respond to Letha saying, quote, get in place. And at this point is when Madison would stay inside of the church while Nathan and Crystal walked outside. And it was then where Kristen and Paul would shoot in the head Nathan and Crystal, as well as Paul shooting Nathan in the stomach as well. And apparently the family had been planning this murder for months. There had been many family members and friends that came forward after the fact saying that either Kristen, Paul, or Letha had approached them with the idea of them being a hitman for Nathan and Crystal and the family would pay them money for doing it. Even Chris, the family friend that came in earlier to talk about his experience with the family, even Chris himself would go on to say that himself was approached by Paul and Kristen asking if he would be a hitman and murder Nathan and Crystal, to which obviously Chris said no. And apparently Kristen and Paul had been asking other people, obviously they say no and so since they hit all of these dead ends, they just decided to do it themselves. Cameron was given a deal. If he cooperated with the police and also testified against his family, he would only be charged with two counts of tampering with evidence. Cameron accepted this plea deal and was sentenced to 10 years in prison as well as testifying against his entire family. Letha would later then plea guilty for engaging in an organized criminal act and she was sentenced to life in prison with possibility of parole in 30 years. But at the time of her sentencing, Letha was actually 54 years old, so it's most likely she will pass away in prison. As far as Paul's trial, at first he was not deemed mentally fit because, as I said, he kept on having seizures and he kept on claiming that he wasn't of sound mind. And so at one point, he wasn't mentally fit to stand trial until he was deemed mentally fit, and then he wasn't deemed mentally fit anymore. And then after that, he just just pled guilty. And out of everyone in her family, Kristen was the only one that didn't plea guilty. Kristen, until the very end, was pleading not guilty to all of her charges and preached her innocence. The whole entire time, she kept on telling police, whatever my family is telling you, it's not true. I'm innocent. Whatever they're saying is a lie because my family is crazy. And she was genuinely just trying to keep up this lie the entire time until the 
end of her trial, when she was pleading not guilty, her whole family, Letha, Paul, and Cameron, came to her trial and testified against her. And then in August of 2016, that's when Kristen's sentencing began. Kristen's motive was found to be custody of Maddie. She didn't want Nathan to see Maddie whenever he wanted to. She didn't want to give him the privilege of doing that because she hated seeing him happy. And she also hated when she wasn't in control of everything that he did and everything that he felt. And so in a way, him getting visitation right was kind of a win for him and it made him feel better. And in return, she wanted to make sure that he never saw Maddie again. And the only way to do that was by murdering him. Court, in the end, found her guilty for first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole. And yeah, that is the end of today's video. If you guys found this video interesting, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are on YouTube. And I would also love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions about the case in the comments below. There has been a lot of discussion over this case, specifically about Cameron's sentencing. A lot of people believe that 10 years is a little bit harsh. A lot of people believe that Cameron was very nonchalant to the crime and he really didn't have much to do with the crime. From his story, he claims that Paul just randomly came home, handed Cameron two guns, and told him to throw him away. But on the flip side, a lot of people speculate that maybe Cameron knew a little bit more than he's leading on. People believe that there's no way Cameron could have lived in that house and have never listened to or heard Kristen and Paul's plans to kill them. And then if he he did hear all of that, why didn't he go to the police? So there has been a little bit of, you know, up and down reactions about that. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions about it in the comments below. And yeah, that is all from me. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day today. Make sure to get outside today, get some fresh air. And as always, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.